Hi, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to talk about some technical knowledge regarding backend systems in software engineering. As you know, currently I'm a software engineer working on buttons and I've been here for around one half year. During this time, I actually accumulated a lot of experience. So many of this knowledge I talk today are actually relevant to my previous mistakes. So I would like to take this video the chance to share this knowledge with you. And hopefully this can not only help your interview, but also help your technical career. So in this video, I'm going to divide this knowledge into three parts. The first is regarding the database or SQL. And second is regarding the distributed system. Last but not least about catch. So let's get started with the first category, the SQL, the database. So one common mistake that I always made previously was I would just not use the parameterized SQL. Parameterized SQL is really important since uh, you can avoid some outsider attack. So instead of appending the string together by adding them together, instead you would just have a question mark there and that is called the parameterized value. On the other hand, foreign key also plays a very important role. Uh, we know foreign key brings us a lot of convenience. However, there are two major concerns regarding foreign key. The first thing is about the safety. As we know, foreign key will have parent and children tables. Therefore, if, for example, we have some cascade, if the parent table delete a certain row, then all its children table, the related foreign key rows will be deleted automatically. And from the second perspective is, when we are using foreign key, usually we would like to use the join. However, when our table is super large, for example, we have like few iteration tables. So we got parent table, we got its children table. So we may have multiple join in the SQL. So in this case, this is really inefficient since you need to loop through multiple tables with huge amount of doubt. Also from the SOA perspective, we have to consider the speed. So usually our SOA will like be within 100 milliseconds means your API has to respond back to the user within 100 milliseconds. If you have like drawing this kind of SQL, then it's actually not working. Hence, there are usually two solutions for this kind of problem. The first one is to use the join table. So instead of we have two tables and use the join SQL to get the relationship between both tables, we have a separate table in between. In this case, this table will be many to many relationships between these two tables. And therefore we don't have to use the join SQL to loop through those two separate tables. Instead, we just get from this table directly. And the second solution is from object perspective. So instead of using one SQL and to get the relationship between these two tables and get the results we want, we will have two separate SQL. So first SQL will visit the parent table to get, for example, the ID for the foreign key in the second table. And then we will have the second SQL to call the second table and to get the data we want. Even though we have two separate SQL and they will establish their own IO to our database. However, in some cases, this will still be faster than a join clause. Since if we have indexed properly, then we can fetch those data very fast instead of scanning through all the rows in the two tables uh, altogether. Now we come to a next very important concept and that is index. Index is really useful when I first designing the table schema. Maybe I do not have this kind of idea by having the index key in the table. However, index key is really important since it can boost your speed a lot. So if you don't have an index key, it will scan through all the rows altogether. However, if you have an index, it won't scan through all the rows anymore. In this case, you can think it as a kind of dictionary. So dictionary has a key and also a value. So key will be the index column and for the value will be an array or a list. In this case, you won't scan through all the values from different keys. Instead, it will only scan through those values under that key. However, we might have a question. Why not we just have index for all the columns? Yeah, that's a very common question. However, we need to also mention that everything in software engineering, there's a trade-off. So when you have index, you are faster. However, that's only for read purpose. But when you're writing, since you know you have index, then for example, the database, once you insert some rows, it needs to sort a bit. And therefore, the writing speed will be slower. Therefore, it's really depend on what kind of database you are designing. So next, we come to the distributed system. Distributed system is a huge topic and this topic 
can hardly ever learn back to college, since back to college, most of the time, we're just dealing with one single instance, uh, software or project all the time. We won't have multiple instances, and therefore, it's a little bit hard to cultivate this kind of knowledge base or the common sense when we're going to the real industry. And therefore, uh, let's talk a bit about distributed system, okay? So usually for a distributed system, the three main concerns or three main things. The first thing is about scalability, how to scale your system. And second is availability, which is when I call your server, I wish your server is alive, therefore I will get a response. And third is consistency. When I write something to your server, I wish my data is there, stored properly. However, you should always remember there's a trade-off between availability and also consistency. The higher availability means lower consistency. Okay, so these are just some very brief concepts. So now I would like to talk one thing uh, that I always made mistake when I first designed the distributed system. As we know, in a microservice architecture, for each service, we might have multiple instances. So the instance, for example, if in the container perspective, that is called pod. Therefore, we might have multiple pods for one service. However, in this case, sometimes when we are writing code, we may not have that kind of concept, like how many instances are there. Therefore, we are just sometimes, for example, write a background running for loop or a background running job. However, this is not good. Since when we upload our code, the code will be the same in all different instances. Therefore, for example, if you have a background running job to emit in the metrics, right? So say if you have three instances, so each of them will emit metrics, and the metrics will be at three times. In some worst cases, we wish to update, for example, the catch. Therefore, for those three instances, we will first fetch the value from the database and then update the catch in a single place. This might introduce a lot of issues, for example, a race condition, when you fetch the data and write into the catch, three instances can write into the catch simultaneously. So there's definitely for a same value, for some, for example, key value pair, the value will be overwritten for two times. There's no doubt. And second is source of truth. Who is right? Since when three instances, when they're fetching the data from the database, the database might be changed. The value might be different for these three single instances. Therefore, we have to consider all these scenarios. So there are a few ways to solve this kind of issue. So first, very common way is to use a cron job. So cron job is a single instance that initialized periodically. Therefore, we can make sure that, okay, there's no uh, the overwritten or there's no duplicated work done in the background job. And the second very common solution is to use uh, the election. So for example, we have three instances and we can elect one instance uh, to do this job. Hence, this is something really important you have to keep in mind. Always have the concept about distributed system when you are writing code, when you are developing your product. And last but not least, let's talk a bit about catch. When we back to school, we will always analyze the time complexity and the space complexity. So space complexity here stands for memory. How's the memory usage? When we are writing code, since they're just a single file or a single project, um, we will think, okay, we can just put the catch wherever we want. However, when we are joining the industry, it's a little bit hard to cultivate the new joiners with the concept of catch layer. Since every time from our project back to school, we we'll usually just call the database to fetch whatever we want. However, in real industry, it's really not that easy since every second there are like millions of requests all around the world. We have to handle those kind of scenarios. Therefore, if you want to make your system faster, you have to introduce catch or the catch layer. Therefore, instead of hitting the database directly, it will hit the catch first. If it finds any data, if it finds result, it will just return back to the user. Therefore, it can save a lot of IO time. However, if it doesn't find in the catch, it will then hit to the database and to get the metadata. However, on the other hand, we should also consider when to use cache. Since cache is limited, memory RAM is much more expensive than the storage, than the SSD. Therefore, we have to consider whether this will cause any OOM issue. NoSQL can store all the relevant data in terms of object. Therefore, instead of fetching the data from different uh, relational tables by using a lot of drawings, 
you can just fetch from this NoSQL table directly and to get all the data you want. However, there's always trade-off. Always remember in software engineering, there's always trade-off. By using NoSQL, you have the faster speed, you got a more detailed object. However, the concern is it reduces the flexibility. You cannot analyze data that easily or you cannot get the relationships between different objects. So there's always trade-off. Okay, so these are the knowledge I would like to share with you in this video. I know during my career so far, I've learned so many things and these are just very tiny, but very important thing that hopefully you can understand as a software engineer. Also, if you think this video is helpful, don't forget to smash the like button and also subscribe my channel. It really help my channel to grow and beat the YouTube algorithm. I really cherish that and hopefully see you in next video. Have a nice day.